Pregame.com. I'm Vegas Runner here with a special guest, Tony George in Vegas. We'll be out tonight, but first we're going to talk NFL teasers. Real quickly, you always hear, I think it's nothing's more of a better's misconception than a certain bet is a square bet. I mean, I, you hear it all the time, and people just take it as fact. Instead of going back and seeing if data and fact supports it, mm -hmm. too many times people just take it as fact. And you hear it all the time. You know, teasers are sucker bets. Parlays are sucker bets. I think nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, I think the person putting the wager is either the sucker and it's not the wager itself. I think each wager is ammunition. And, you know, depending on the situation, the ammunition changes. It's like a fight. You might bring a gun if you're 100 feet away, but if you're six inches away, I'd rather have a knife than a newsie. So I think with sports betting, it's the same way. Yes, yeah, straight bets is the way to grind. Mm -hmm. But there's times where a, a teaser, a parlay can give you positive, you know, EV. Mm -hmm. So I, I think in the NFL is where it's at. And me, myself, I love teasers. Well, uh, I got a new car on the driveway because of teasers. And it's talking about bringing a knife to a gunfight. I got the gun and the books got the knife when it comes to two team six point teasers in the NFL. You can get them at 11 to 10 odds. And the bottom line is, and you and I were talking before we came in here. Correct. I am a professional handicapper, and I am a better. And I, as much as I like to talk about the Big 12 and the game and tell you why this wide receiver can beat that defensive back and why this guy's got a howitzer for an arm and the other guy does it and all, all the things, the bottom line is I'm handicapping numbers. And the numbers that I like to avoid are fall numbers. How do you, you can't move a line. If you're Billy Walters and you go in there and you bet $100,000, you might be able to move a line off a number and go back and get, Correct. Get, and get what you want. When it, comes, when it comes to the NFL, just consider this. If you averaged out all the scores over the last 10 years, the average margin of victory is 5.7 points between all the games. They're given a sharp guy like me or you, they're given sharps six points a side. No, I, I, I agree. Exceeds the margin of victory, and I'm able to move a number off a fall number. Screw the the theory that you can't tease through zero, this, that, and the other. I want to get I want to get a team that I like off three, six, or seven. I agree. Nothing could be further from the truth, Tony. I, I look at it this way: anytime a sports book, a casino, doesn't want to take action or limits action, that's a telling sign. Mm -hmm. And when it gets to the NFL playoffs, especially the NFC, AFC conference championships, the limits on teasers decrease out here. There's sports books that'll take 10 dime, 20 dime teaser during the NFL season and won't take more than a nickel when it comes to the NFC, AFC championship. Odds makers I've heard on record say that the true odds during that week on a teaser should be closer to minus 170, 180. Yeah. And now you're saying you could get minus 110 on a six-point teaser, you know, minus 120 if you go higher. That, to me, says you have an edge. So that's why I say it's not the better. I mean, the, the bet that makes it square. It's what kind of bet you're – the better that makes it square. Well, how many times do you see an AFC and NFC championship sitting on three, three and a half? No, exactly. AFC, NFC. You put a guy like me and you with – a fat wallet walking through the door to Bellagio Forget Sunday morning about it. and going in there and say, we want 10 dimes and we're going to tease them our way. I'll even take the dogs and get them teased up over a fall number. You'll kill them. No, I agree. And they're the biggest, better misconception, and people have taken this for fact forever, is don't tease through zero. You know, the game can't land in a tie, whatever. You know, you lose a point, that kind of nonsense. And for some reason, people have just taken it as fact and don't tease through zero. Nothing could be further from the truth. 15 years of data I have here that if you teased a minus three point favorite, six and a half points, and took it to plus three and a half, the sample size of 455 opportunities, you cash 75% of those times. That's a positive EV of 7%, you know, meaning by going through that zero that supposedly is a square move, the data doesn't support that. It says that, yeah, it is a sharp move. When you could take a minus three 
and get plus three, three and a half, mm -hmm. you're going to make money. And I think you're absolutely right. It's going through those key numbers. And nine times out of ten, that minus three is a home team. Exactly. Now you're getting a home dog over a fall number. Exactly. I'll, I'll bet. I'll bet a dime on ten games. I'll bet a dime each every game blind with that scenario, and you're going to win 60, 70 percent of the time. And that's what the data represents. And, and even road dogs, I'll tell you this. And you said the fall numbers. If you take a road dog between four and a half and five and a half and tease it six points. So that means you're going through to number seven and you're going through even the number 10 and even 11 on the five and a half. Mm -hmm. A sample size of 309 games, 75% win rate for that road dog if you teased a four and a half to five and a half and took it up to plus 10 and a half plus 11 and a half. You, that cash is 75% of the time on road dogs. And think about this. How many road dogs do you see, now, and say you want to do a two-team teaser, two-team six, six-and-a-half point teaser, you're going to do a side and or you can do a total. How many road dogs with that win percentage do you see at that number on Monday Night Football? Exactly. And then you, and then you take that fall number, 37 or 42 on the total, somewhere in between there, and you go up or down based on the scenario, the chances you adding to your profits and minimizing your losses. If you're playing the side or the total straight, a straight up bet, to have that, even if you were going two units on the side or the total for that game as your play, and you wanted to back it up with a bonus teaser or a bonus bet for just even a unit, think about that. No, you can I add agree. your profit, and if, hey look, crazy things happen on Monday Night Football. You know, Team A loses it by half a point. Right, that, right. that never happens on my right, football. Right. You drop a one by half a point. Yeah, yeah. If someone's taking a knee or, or you know, <laughs> run yeah, back you're a going kick. crazy. Yeah, you know. But if you had that teaser, that is basically what I call an insurance policy. No, I especially since you said the margin of victory where it falls. Yeah. And you know, when you look at, at the NFL, it it isn't gonna fall on the number, but the fact that you're getting six points, seven mm. points, you know. I just think it makes sense. And the one thing I really want to stress, here's the biggest misconception of all, that NFL lines get tougher to beat as the season goes on, that they get sharper. That's, I was ready to say bullshit, so I'm going to say it. Yeah. The sample size isn't big enough for the odds makers to get sharper, number one. There's only 16 games each team play. Not enough data, number one. Number two, the betting public outweighs wise guy money. When that's the case, you don't need to get sharp. You just need to balance your books. That's exactly right. The data shows this, that between week one and three, okay, we, between week one and three, 26.7% of all games fall within zero to four points of the spread, mm -hmm. okay? Between week 12 and 14, now this is the end of the season, 26% fall within that same range. So less than a half percent difference, right. given the odds makers, mm -hmm. 10 extra weeks to watch these teams. Right. Now you bring that further, that spread, and you say, okay, how about within seven points of the point spread, which is a teaser. 40% <coughs> fall within zero to seven points of the point spread between weeks one and three. Between week 12 and 14, it's 41.3. Mm -hmm. So they get 1% sharper right. over 10 weeks. I don't know about you, but I've been handicapping games 20 years. I get stronger in terms of win-loss percentage in units one as the season goes on. Exactly. Along. I'll give you an example. The sharpest lines, supposedly, are in the playoffs. I went 12 and 5 last year, brother. I, I, dude, I believe you. Yeah, I'm just I, telling I, you. No, and there. I know. And because I, guys are looking at the wrong things. Exactly. A lot of times exactly. the public is. Which, you know... Fine and dandy, more opportunity for me. And, and, and the one thing I'll stress is because that... Because they're driving the line. Yeah, exactly. Now, maybe in college basketball, NBA, baseball, lines can get sharper because they have such a big sample size. Right. And that's why I always say I feel more comfortable betting second halves later in the season because I think the odds makers have a better grip. Yeah. And when a game at half is so much further from the point spread, you have a chance to take advantage of a regression, a progression, right. of the, it fall near. Mm -hmm. But in football, NFL, they don't have no sample size. But <laughs> these teams have played eight games and half their season's over. Yeah. You know, how much data can they have in eight games? All that stats that they're throwing out there, the sports books love throwing stats out. Mm -hmm. You think they're going to offer that to you if it's going to beat them? They throw the most meaningless things out there, walk into any sports book, pick up those ATS sheets, 
That's what mm. they love handing out. Look at all the information offshore sports books give out. Yeah, they want they got, you to read that stuff. They got game matchups. They want me to put them on my website. Yeah, exactly. It, why? Because that's the kind of data there you that's go. useless. Answer the that answers the question. And, and that's the biggest better misconception, I think, that they just take things as fact. Like, okay, this is what you're supposed to do. This is what works. This is what sharps mm -hmm. do. That's not what they do. If you think that these betting syndicates, that these professional betters don't bet teasers, you're you're have no idea what's going on in the marketplace. I, I've been doing it for 20 years. I'll do it every Monday night. I do one for because you know a lot of our clientele here at PregamePros.com, Pregame, a lot right. of guys that come in the forum. Right. They're recreational gamblers. They're enthusiastic about wagering, but they're rec they're betting sure, you sure. Know, less than a nickel. Right. Okay. But for them, you know, a two three hundred dollar bet, it's nice to back it up with a teaser. On Sundays, I do a teaser. On Monday night, I always do a teaser. I do, too. And call yeah. me square. I give out teasers. And I'll tell you what. When I square worked, puts food on the table. Exactly. In that instance. Back in the day, and when I was, we were moving steam with Philly Godfather, I'll tell you what. You don't know how many times we weren't able to beat a number right away, mm -hmm. you know, because they, they adjusted it. Sorry. And uh, <laughs> you like that? <laughs> we we weren't able to able to beat a number because books would adjust it, and right away we'd say tease it. You know, if you could now right. we're, we're getting the, the sharp side mm -hmm. with more points than we would have got. Well, see the thing of it is you talk about sharps and square. A lot of times that number is a square number. With a teaser, you can move it to a sharp number. Exactly. And that is the bottom line. It's that simple. I mean. Everybody out there listening, it's not rocket scientist it, science. It's not. It, it's not an exotic wager. It's a smart. It's a smart money move, getting a sharper line. And, and that's you know, the key. And you're not gonna. And, uh, we sound like we get hit every one of no, them. No, no. The you bottom line is you because, have to be selective. Because every now and then the Arizona Cardinals are gonna beat the Pittsburgh Steelers exactly. for no apparent no, reason. Exactly. No. The thing is, you have to be selective. And what you said at, at the start of this is you have to bet numbers exactly when you bet right. teasers. When yep. you straight bet, you you break down matchups like you yep. said. You know, you, there's a lot of handicapping to see if there's value in a number. Sure. When it comes to teasers, because you have to hit a higher percentage, because the VIG's a little higher. You're right. You know, well, when you do a six-point teaser, like you said, it's 110. Yep. But the higher teaser you go, the higher win percentage, the holds more. But with that said, if you're selective and you bet numbers instead of teams, that's the whole goal of this is to bet numbers. Right. This is a market. The price is the point spread. If you're able to get the best of the price, you're going to turn a profit. And the data represents that, you know, there's value, that teasers can be positive EV bets, but only if you do it through certain numbers. Like you said, getting it past that three, getting it past that seven, getting it past that 10. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, you know, there's nothing more important than that. An eight point favorite that you could bring down the two. Mm -hmm. Now you covered that seven, you covered that three, you take a dog up from four and a half to 10 and a half, you went through to seven, you went through to 10, you take a minus three, now you get to take it to plus three. I mean, those are key moves. It increases your probability of winning. I agree. By simply getting off, get through or under those numbers. That's the bottom line. It's that is you've had a lot of success before. with teasers. Absolutely, and I've been and I've had a lot of people say that's a square bet. I've heard that. I love for that. the last I love ten that. years. I Guess love what? That. I got yeah. a, I got a square bet that's that's a nickel in my pocket exactly. right now, and you're in there worried. You know. Yeah, yeah. Being you, sharp. Yeah, and you laid three and a half, and they won by three. And <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah. And you're sharp. bitching, you're bitching and tearing, tearing your ticket up as you're walking out of the sports book. I agree. I'm picking up the money and headed to the strip joint. I, mean, I it's a different ball game, and I'll take that square bet every day. <laughs> I agree, and, and that's the bottom line, dude. The one thing is make sure the data backs up these misconceptions about don't tease through zero or lines get sharper as the season goes on. That's just the misconceptions that sports books want you to believe, odds makers want you to believe. Me being a, a blackjack player that played with a team, uh, we heard from every pit boss out there that the best thing that ever happened to us was card counting because it gave people the appearance that blackjack is beatable, but less than 1% are able to beat it. Same thing with the odds makers in the sports books. Why do they give you these sheets with all these meaningless stats? Simply because you can't use them to beat them. You know, so I think when it comes to teasers, you can't just put it aside. It's another weapon. It's more ammunition for you. And if you only want to show up with a knife or a gun, you may be outmanned. You know, mm -hmm. you don't know what's going to be held. And I think for every single bet, there may be a different way to attack it. So look forward to teasers from Tony George. 
Look forward to teasers from me. Call us square, but if we're cashing, I'll be square. See the ticket window. <laughs> yeah, see the square at the ticket window. We're out.